We now want to introduce the topic of torque. And torque is sort of the um, rotational analog of force. Okay? So torque applies a force to an object and then it causes that object to rotate. All right? But uh, the torque is also modulated by the distance from the axis that the force is applied. And you'll see what I'm saying with this simple example. So imagine you have a rusty bolt and you want to loosen the rusty bolt so you put a wrench around it and you want to turn the bolt uh, turn the wrench to loosen the bolt now the bolt is going to move and rotate about this axis that is pointing into and out of the board represented by this dot All right the bolt is going to spin uh, one way or the other about that axis. Okay? Now, what we do with the wrench, we want to grip the wrench and if we want to loosen it, then we want to turn the wrench this way. So I'm going to take the wrench and I'm going to apply an upward force on the wrench. So my force is going to be upward. All right, So I'm going to apply an upward force on the uh, wrench which will hopefully turn the bolt. Now, what if the bolt doesn't turn? Let's say it's really rusty. What happens then? Well, there's a few things you can do. Number one, you can apply a larger force. You can try and push harder. Or maybe you've heard the saying, if at first you don't succeed, get a bigger hammer or get a bigger wrench. Well, in this case, we want to get a bigger wrench. So if I get a wrench with a longer handle, and I apply the same force, you'll often find that it's easier to twist the bolt in this instance. Why is it easier to twist the bolt when I lengthen the handle? It's because I'm able to apply a larger torque to my object that I want to cause rotation in. So torque is defined as F times R. And R is what we call the lever arm, and it's the distance from the axis of rotation to where the force is applied. Okay? And these are vectors. And so you may be thinking to yourself, OK, now is this a dot product? Since this is vector multiplication, is this a dot product? Uh, well, it can't be, because if torque is a vector, then a vector dotted into another vector gives you another scalar. So this cannot be the uh, definition of torque. Uh, the dot product cannot be. It must be the cross product. Okay? It must be the cross product. In the next video, we'll talk about exactly what the cross product is and means. But the simple answer uh, for a basic definition of cross product is if I have two vectors and I cross them into each other, then the resulting magnitude of the uh, uh, result of the cross product, the, the magnitude of the cross product, is given by the magnitude of A times the magnitude of B times the sine of the angle between the two vectors. So F is going to be applied this way. And R is measured from the axis of rotation to where the force is applied. And so in this particular case, we can see that the um, angle between F and R is um, 90 degrees. Now technically, okay, now technically this is R cross F. All right. So when you actually do your dot pro or, uh, cross products and you plug them into the matrix, uh, if you use the matrix method, to actually find the uh, direction as well, um, then it is R cross F. Okay, so torque is R cross F. But the magnitude of the torque is given by FR sine theta. All right, so if we're only interested in the magnitude, we can use that definition with impunity. Okay, now torque is a vector. And it has direction to it. Um, 
the bolt is going to start rotating, right? We want to start the bolt into rotation, and we say that it's going to rotate about this axis, okay? So in what direction does the torque point? So we define the direction that the torque points by what we call the right-hand rule. And what we do with the right-hand rule is we take our forefinger and we point it in the direction of the lever arm, R. Then we take our middle finger and we point it in the upward direction of the force or whatever direction the force is pointing. And then the direction that your thumb naturally points is the direction of the torque. So in this case, the torque is going to be coming out of the board. And if you think about it, that makes a little bit of sense. If I apply a force upward on a lever arm here, that's going to cause the bolt to rotate this way, and the bolt is going to come out. It's going to loosen. If I wanted to apply my downward force this way to tighten the bolt, my bolt is going to twist into the board and tighten. So that's another way of thinking about what the direction of the torque um, is related to the cross product here, okay? But this is the uh, magnitude of the cross product, and this is the definition of the cross product, and this allows you to get the uh, components of the torque. This gives you the magnitude of the torque. If you want to just find the magnitude of the torque, you can use this, and then you can use the right-hand rule to find the direction, or you can get uh, the components and thus the direction directly from the cross product definition of torque. But that is the definition of torque and that's where the saying give me a lever long enough and I'll move the world comes from. If you uh, lengthen your lever arm you increase your torque for any given force or you can increase your force and that also increases your torque. But you can think of torque as a rotational force applied to an object to cause it to rotate about an axis. Alright, in the next video we'll talk about moments of inertia.